so tuckman's stages four stages in group uh, development were identified by tuckman 1965 so what should be there in the group development how you can develop a group forming step 1 the team is just coming together each member wishes to impress their personality on the group so they want to like you know uh, impress uh, with their personality in the uh, on like uh, on the group individuals will be trying to find out about each other and about the aims and norms of the team there will be there will at uh, there will at this stage probably be a wariness about introducing new ideas the objectives being pursued may uh as yet be unclear and the leader may not yet have emerged okay so then uh, like uh, they will be knowing each other in that and there will be there will be some aims with which uh, the group is uh, like uh, to be formed and some norms of a team uh, would be you know seen there will at this stage probably be wariness about introducing new ideas there will be like you know uh, a varying of like they, they each one will be wary of sharing new ideas immediately they won't be sharing right uh, so uh, like you know like it's new it's 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 a very new group and everyone will be you know like it will be the starting stage of knowing each other so then comes storming then this frequency involves this frequently involves more or less open conflict between team members there may be changes agreed in the original objectives procedures and norms established for the group if the team is developing successfully this may be a fruitful phase as more realistic targets are set and trust between the group members increases in storming so what is the first stage the first stage is forming first the formation happens happens then storming uh, like uh, frequently involves more or less open conflict that means some conflicts may happen between the members that can be one of the cases there may be some changes agreed in the original objectives and procedures and norms established for the group that means they want some kind of changes in that and uh, uh, team if if the team is developing successfully this may be a fruitful phase that's okay but there are chances of not agreeing with the norms norming then everything becomes somewhat normal things settle down okay and then comes performing then they perform by collaborating with each other without any hindrances later writers added two stages to tuckman's model dorming and morning adjourning once a group has been performing well for some time it may get complacent and fall back into self maintenance functions at the expense of the task that means now they are performing well but you know Uh, as the time passes by uh, th that group may also require some kind of maintenance right uh, that means some kind of uh, change so what do you mean by complacent complacent is nothing but uh, you know like uh, like then they think themselves of you know uh, like they, they they are like you know self satisfied kind of they think of themselves at, as like that but always it is not something like uh, if you are satisfied everything is all right correct and that may kind of you know uh, uh, like uh, whatever the task they are performing if they think that they are self satisfied without anyone judging it then it is like being over confident right then morning and adjourning the group sees itself as half having fulfilled its purpose or if it is a temporary group is due to physically disband this is a stage of confusion sadness and anxiety as the group breaks up there is evaluation of its achievements and gradual withdrawal of group members if the group is to continue going on to new task there will uh, be a renegotiation of aims and roles a return to the forming stage that's what this is the last stage so there is a activity team formation stages you can go through this then comes the shared objectives what do you mean by shared objectives getting commitment to teams shared objectives may involve a range of leader activity clearly setting out the objectives of the team first and foremost allowing the team to participate in setting objectives okay 
What do you mean by shared objectives? All the members like in the team are having similar kind of objectives. They share it, right? So clearly setting out the objectives of the team first step. Allowing team to participate in setting objectives. Second, giving regular feedback on progress and results with constructive criticism. That is very important. Uh, seeing the progress and wherever there is a there is <coughs> no progress seen, uh, criticism uh, a, like can be done. Of course, uh, that should be welcomed. Getting the team involved in providing performance feedback, offering positive reinforcement for cooperative uh, working and task achievement by the team as a whole rather than just our individuals. So what is that? Uh, offering positive reinforcement. That means if everything is going all right, then they can like, you know, continue with it and praise each other uh, for cooperative working and task achievement by the team as a whole. Uh, like it's not only about star individuals, but everyone here is like, you know, considered and championing the success of the team within the organization. Then comes the team building. In the previous section, we suggested that teams have a natural ev evolutionary life cycle. It starts and then uh, like performs and then uh, the team uh, will perform its work and then it comes to an end. The task again, they have to uh, again a new team has to be formed. It's a cycle. So and that four stages can be identified. Not all teams develop into mature teams and might be stuck stagnating in any of the stages. So what are they? So if so it often falls to the supervisor or manager to build the team. There are three main issues involved in team building. First team identity. Get people to see themselves as a part of this group. That is the biggest problem. See, some people they don't want to see I, I like uh, like each other and see uh, like eye to eye, but still they have to be considered for forming the group. Team solidarity. Everyone should stand for each other. OK, should be loyal and should have shared objectives. That means encourage the team to commit itself to shared work objectives. That means having common goals and all and to cooperate willingly and effectively in achieving them. So team development can be facilitated by active team building measures to support team identity, solidarity and commitment to shared objectives. So you if you want to form a team, develop a team, you should be seeing all these things to build a team. They should support each other. OK and they should be loyal to each other and they should have shared objectives and commitment towards that. So this activity also to be performed. Then comes the team identity. Then we will be seeing the team solidarity and we'll be seeing about successful teams. So let's let's discuss. Team identity. A manager might seek to reinforce the sense of identity of the group. That means what is its identity? Arguably, this is the part. Uh, this is in part the creation of boundaries, identifying who is in the team and who is not. So that's what they will be seeing. So name, let's say name. Uh, what does a team identity uh, like? You know, if you if, if what is the identity of someone or someone representing a team? So like name, so staff at McDonald restaurant are known as crew. So in other cases, the name would be more official describing what the team actually does. Example systems implementation task force or something like that. In McDonald's, if they say crew, that means it's a team. OK. Uh, Who is working? Badge or uniform is again a identity about a particular team. So you see ID card. So that ID card shows what the person is known for or can perform the tasks. Expressing the team self image. Uh, so badge or ID card or uniform shows what kind of team that is. So you see there are uniforms for different different uh, like uh, you know levels in the management. Then team self image teams often develop their own jargon especially for new projects. What do you mean by jargon? Hello? Hello? Hello, yes, sir. What do you mean by jargon? See, they will be using special words or expressions, right? Some specialized language like I, I can say slang. OK, yes, sir. or some idiom or some technical language to represent themselves especially for new projects. Like you know. 
they will be using some kind of uh, slang to motivate people to work hard. Building a team mythology over time, groups and teams build up their own history and character. Stories from the past may take on an almost mythical culture nature. Separate space, a separate space. It might help if team members work together in some or adjacent offices, but this is not always possible. See, they may look for separate space or adjacent, but you know they have to work within themselves. Within, like they have to work with each other. And then team solidarity, expressing solidarity, encouraging interpersonal relationships. That means they should have strong bonding, dealing with conflicts, controlling competition. Competition is good. Healthy competition is good, but it should not uh, like be like someone wants to be favorite of the manager or the boss. So favoritism undermines solidarity. That's again solidarity. Encouraging some competition within other groups. So this is what you have to do group cohesion. So can you do this activity Tanya? I'm looking through it, sir. Yeah. What is the what is the meaning of this? Group unity that togetherness. So like can you see any dangers in creating a very close knit group? Think of the effect of strong team cohesion on what the group spends its energies and attention on. How group regards outsiders and any information or feedback they supply, how the group makes decisions. What could be done about these dangerous effects? So this have to be seen whether they are seeing everything to get in a like, you know, like together or individually you have to see and check. Can you give me the answers for this? Uh, the group's attention should be spent on its uh, maintenance, uh, behavior, and the relationships among each other. Which one? If you the tell me. The first one. Uh, yeah, group spends its energies on what? On, uh, on uh, maintenance and uh, behavior and the relationships among themselves. Group spends its energies and attention on maintaining relationships with each other. Hello, I didn't get sorry. Yes, sir. Let's see what is the version of the textbook. I've got it from there only, sir, actually. You know, like. I okay. Yeah, so groups energies may be focused on its own maintenance and relationship instead of on the task. Group may be suspicious. Uh, second point is what can you read out? So they kind of, you know, uh, they they look they look on their own maintenance and the relationships. They are busy in that. What's the second question? Question is uh, how the group regards outsiders and any information or feedback yeah, they, they may be suspicious or dismissive of outsiders and may reject any contradictory information or criticism they supply they don't see they don't want anyone to comment on them and uh, yes, they will be more of trying to stick to their views and because they are very closely knit right they are very united and they think that they cannot go wrong but it's not something like that they have there can be mistakes and they can learn from mistakes, but if they think that then they can't learn from mistakes and group. Third one is what? How the group makes decisions. See everything is like group. They try to like, you know, make united decisions, but sometimes uh, it may not be always right. Like more of group thing. Yes, See, yeah, yeah, every time they want to be unitedly uh, taking the decisions. Successful teams evaluating team effectiveness that uh, the task of the team leader is to build a successful or effective team. The criteria for team effectiveness include what task performance, team functioning, team member satisfaction. So task performance, fulfillment of task and organization goals. That's what a successful team successful team is known for. They should be performing their tasks and or fulfilling their tasks or goals of the organization. 
then team functioning constructive maintenance of team working okay uh, like they should also you know like always check like how they are functioning and if any kind of uh, they have to rectify something they should be going for that like uh, minimizing their errors managing the demands of team dynamics roles and processes team member satisfaction fulfillment of individual development and relationship needs so everyone wants to grow and also they like how they uh, share a bonding or relationship which either, with each other in the team is also something which have to be seen their satisfaction uh, how they are they satisfied in working uh, in the team are they okay with the team or they want individually they want to work number of factors both quantitative and qualitative that may be assessed to decide whether or how far a team is operating effectively some factors cannot be taken as evidence on their own but may suggest underlying problems such as accident rates may be due to poor safety systems for example uh, as well as poor morale and lack of focus due to team problems see there can be problems right uh, like uh, accidents may be due to poor safety systems team is like you know there can there is no proper safety systems so accidents may happen and uh, like poor they don't have morale like you know they are not motivated uh, to work and lack of focus due to team problems can lead to all this first problem is there is a poor safety system and if they are not focused they these things can also happen some characteristics of some of the characteristics of effective and ineffective teams may be summarized as follows quantifiable labor turnover if it is effective team labor turnover will be less ineffective high correct hello yes sir accident rates uh, accident rates will be low if it is effective team ineffective high absenteeism low high output unproductivity high here it will be low quality of output high here it will be low this is ineffective this is effective individual targets here achieved not achieved stoppages and interruptions will be very low very high because of misunderstandings and disagreements qualitative this is more of about attribute or quality commitment to targets and organization goals will be high here will be low understanding of teams work and why it exists will be high low and because they take th things seriously it is effective understanding of individual roles within the team high low communication between the team members free and open mistrust is there here ideas shared for teams benefit it is owned by individuals for their own benefit feedback constructive criticism they are they they are very much uh, like uh, uh, you know agreeing or happy with any kind of criticism here it's not like that problem solving addresses causes only looks at symptoms interest in work decisions active passive acceptance they actively you know ac uh, actively take the things uh like they are very active in uh like uh, and interested in work related decisions they don't accept immediately opinions they are having a very good consensus because they are uh, like you know a team uh uh with, which is effective team and here imposed solutions and uh, job satisfaction is very high here it's very low here motivation in leaders absence is high when the cats away that means they want to you know escape because they think that no one uh, like if there is no one who is motivating them they will you know uh, not be on 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 track or will try to escape from the work rewarding effective teams yes should be rewarded uh, so organizations may try to encourage effective team performance by designing reward systems that recognize team rather than individual success so indeed individuals performance rewards may act against team cooperation and performance so the team will be rewarded they emphasize individual rather than team performance when if it is individual performance rewards uh, so they emphasize individual rather than team performance. they encourage team leaders to think of team members only as individuals rather than relating to them as team when when you see individually okay but for team rewards distinct roles targets and performance measures so for team rewards to be effective team must have certain characteristics they should be given lot different different roles should be uh, like given to people targets should be given significant order that, that means they should be given greater independence to work uh, and maturity and stability should be there and cooperation between the members should be very important and interdependence of the team members also should be there because 
the tasks what they are dividing with each other should be complementing in the sense each they should definitely related tasks uh, the tasks may relate may have some relation so definitely there should be some interdependence seen reward schemes which focus on team or organization performance include profit sharing schemes whatever the profits come will be shared to the team or some cash uh, some pool of cash related to profit will be distributed gain sharing schemes using a formula related to suitable performance indicators such as added value if they add value to the organization definitely they'll be rewarded employee share option schemes that means stocks will be given by the company to them at very low or cheaper prices okay so um, we are done sir, with this yes i have a question here yes uh, the table you just explained me some of the characteristics of effective yes. and ineffective yeah, teams yeah 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 yes so uh, it's like uh, we are comparing both of them right yes you are low comparing. and high so what are we comparing sir like effective ones and the ineffective ones uh, the yes. employees effective employees and ineffective employees or situations sir yeah it is about team not employees teams okay 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 yeah yeah sir okay fine that's what yeah yeah okay yes sir okay 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 then now what we are left over with what is the next chapter we are supposed to do we are done this right Uh, training and development is next um sir we have to do motivating individuals and groups okay okay we have done individual groups and teams so motivating individuals and groups will be doing okay that will be next chapter then 1 2 3 4 5 and then left one okay yes sir okay then we will continue tomorrow okay tanya okay sir okay tanya thank you hmm yeah do